Okay, what's going on here? Well, for a couple of years now, I've been entertaining the locker bypass for the Jeep Rubicon JK. And there's a company called Searchers Four Wheel Drive. I've been kind of watching watching them develop this little switching setup. And I like I like what they've done, so I decided to buy it. You can see right here, Searchers Four Wheel Drive. So what they do is they give you a switch assembly. And if you look on the left, you see this where it says locker override. You think you're getting an LED light in there or something, but that's not the case. It's a, it's a hollow hole. You can see the two switches there. The kit's kind of pricey. Basically, you're paying for this beautiful assembly, which with a little bit of dremeling, I'm going to pull out the, the locker switches where the sway bar and the rocker for the lockers is. I'm going to pull that out and basically cut out the plastic section that says off-road, and then this assembly will fit in there. And there's some other little uh, pieces for wiring. Comes with this wire right here. It's MTW wire. It's nice and soft. Uh, looks looks to be about 16 gauge wire. Could be 14. But what I want to do is I want to I want to make it a little better and a little safer. So in theory, the the locker relays for the JK use a switched ground. So basically, you're going to tap off the front relay and the rear relay locker, and you're going to bring that wire to these switches then they parallel off the load side of the switches and go to ground that's what this is for right here for a ground connection and basically when you activate this front or rear locker those lockers now will come on in as well as uh, four high four low two-wheel drive the nice thing about this setup is you can turn your front locker on if you want just the front locker or your rear locker on and as I said, you can use them in high. You could even put the rear locker on in two-wheel drive. Kind of interesting setup. But this was like $73 for what you see here. So it's a bit pricey. But I want to make it a little better. So I was thinking about this. So I drew a little diagram here. You can see you have your... This, this represents the two locker relays under the hood. And I know I have to tap into the purple wire in each wiring harness. And then that... Those wires off of each one, the rear for the rear, the front for the front, go to the selector switches right there. And then obviously you close the switches and the switches and basically you need to get to ground to make those uh, lockers turn on. What I want to do is I want to put a safety switch in series with that ground. And that's what this switch is for right here. So my thought was that I would open up this handle if I wanted to use the locker override and basically put this switch up, and then that would uh, enable the two rocker switches over here to then work. But in addition to that, I also want an LED light behind this that will glow and tell me I'm in locker override mode, or locker override ready, I guess would be a better description. And then when that's lit up and that rocker toggle switch has been closed, then these two switches now would come into play. So I'm gonna find a 12 volt source under there, fuse it or tap it off of something that's, that's already fused, go to an LED light, and you can see here that, the, that this switch, the bypass safety switch, is in series with the ground. So if this switch remains open, this light never lights, and these two switches do nothing. If you close this switch and put it in ready mode then you get the led light that says i'm on these two switches are in play if i choose to use them and then depending upon how i use these the circuit is now complete because this is closed to ground and the locker should come on so the question is what do i use behind this i was thinking about an led bulb maybe soldering some wires but then i thought about this setup right here now these i pick up at autozone okay and they're really nice. They can be cut to whatever length you want. This is just uh, eight inch red LED strips. I use these uh, for my hood vents are illuminated. Behind my grill is illuminated. My Evo quarter pounder bumper has red LEDs behind the Evo symbol. At night, it looks pretty neat. So my idea would be to uh, cut one LED off and have the wires come off of that. There's a 3M sticky back behind these LEDs. And my plan would be to get that LED, just one of them, 
using the sticky back 3M tape in there and then have the two wires come off. So that's my plan with that. This is what I have in mind here. So you might ask, well, I don't understand the purpose of the safety switch. Well, why do I want to have this? For the simple reason that if my knee or leg, or even if the switch failed for whatever reason, let's say I was on a mass pike or something doing 55 miles an hour, 65, whatever, and I bumped one of these switches, uh, that could turn a locker on immediately at a high rate of speed, and who the hell knows what would happen. Maybe the vehicle would just completely uh, lock up on dry pavement and roll, or I could lose control of the steering, who knows. And, or blow apart the locker at that speed. So the idea is this is a, a, a safety switch in the sense of if I'm not in ready mode, these switches, if you bump them by accident, nothing would happen. So if I'm in four high, let's say, and I want to use the locker bypass, I turn this switch on, the LED light comes on, it tells me I'm in ready mode, and then these two switches come into play. So that's, that's what I have here. That's my little diagram. Um, this, is, this is what's going on on Recon 1. So we're just taking a look at some of the uh, pieces that I've assembled to, to begin this project. Okay, a little look at what you have here. Uh, this cost, I think, $20 for this. I have two four-inch strips. And, you know, they make it dummy-proof in the sense of they give you a... Uh, this would plug into your lighter or any 12-volt accessory. Uh, but mine are obviously going to be hardwired. But you can see how right here what, what you have. So this little piece plugs in. I would need that. And then uh, I would like to just have one or two LEDs and cut it off. That's, that's my plan anyway. That's, that's, that's what I hope to accomplish here. And then I'll take this wire that I have and just, you know, have six, eight inches of it, separate the two, and then that'll be my two conductors. But you can see these are really nice, and um, they're user-friendly. I've got them all over the place on the Jeep. Even some of my interior lights in the back, uh, in the trunk area, uh, I use these, and I have them hardwired in. And I've had them in for years, and uh, they're really reliable. Another look at what you have. So they give you about two feet of wire... As I said, plugs into your accessory. I'll just be using one of these, so I'll, I'll take six or eight inches back, I'll cut that, I'll separate the two wires, and then I'll be able to, to tie in. And then that little plug right there plugs into the LED strip. Now, you can see here, there's 3M tape on the back. Uh, it looks like, as I look at these LEDs, it looks like the first cut point is right there. There's a symbol where you can cut it. So that looks looks like I would end up with about two inches of LED strip. So maybe I'll curve it in that opening. Uh, I'll come up with a way to get it in there or at least get one of the LEDs in and then just have, have the rest of this come out of the back of this assembly right here. That's my plan. Maybe I can wrap it in there and have that come out. So. So that's what I'm thinking anyway. Now, if you wanted to just simplify and you just go with what they send you, you don't worry about the LED lights. Um, you don't worry about having to have the extra feed for the LED. You wouldn't have to worry about the safety switch that I want to install somewhere on the dash of the Jeep. Uh, you're somewhat limited with room in that area, but obviously I want to have this switch put somewhere uh, where, where, I can, where I can utilize the covered uh, safety switch. We'll just call this the locker bypass enable switch so you wouldn't have any of that and basically these switches would be active once you once you hook them up anytime and that just eh, a little bit of fear factor that should i bump this by accident with my knee or anything uh, a locker could come on when i didn't want it to come on so that's the only drawback that i see but once again using the extra safety switch or enable switch uh, i think it would be just fine and and quite safe You can see here that I cut the LED strip at that mark. So I'm going to use this piece right here. I'll test it. I'll grab the, uh, the switch setup that they give you with a couple uh, nine volt batteries hooked up. This is what comes to test them. And I'll plug that in and test it and just to make sure that this is in fact going to work. All right, you can see here, I have about a two inch strip of LEDs. 
I plugged it into the test port with the batteries hooked up. There we go. Nice little setup. All right, all I've done is basically, in a hasty way, just kind of wrapped the LEDs in there. Now, obviously, I'll end up taking the 3M tape off and folding it in there. And I may use a little silicone behind it just to keep it in there. But in a nutshell, this thing would be set up like that. And then when I turn the bypass enable switch on, what's going to happen is that'll light up like that. So that'll tell me that thing's in the go position, it's ready, and then the two switches on the right would now be active. If either of those switches is closed, it would turn the front or rear locker on in four high uh, in, and in any order. So that's, that's the plan. I think it'll work out pretty nice. That's not bad. These things throw some pretty good heat, so my thinking was instead of using one of these LED styles like this that throws a lot of heat, Maybe it throws so much heat that it might actually melt or discolor that plastic. It's, it's basically just a piece of plastic, uh, almost like a, uh, a sticky clear decal that's pushed over that hole right there. You can see how wide open it is. So rather than take a chance with heat, I know that these LED lights don't throw any heat, uh, this, this style right here. So that's, that was another big factor that I was thinking about in using something like this. All right, here we are in Recon 1. You can see this side plastic piece. Here it is right here. It just has these little tabs that, that go into these various cutouts right here. And I've been in and out of here many times. Uh, way back in there, there's a hole through the firewall. That's probably where I'm going to be bringing my cable through. But now what I'm trying to do is get this whole uh, sway bar axle lock switch assembly out. So I was able to take my hands and squeeze a couple clips. You can see in there, there's another set way down in the back. I gotta reach in there. And then I should be able to unplug that, that wiring harness right there. So that's what I'm trying to do now, get this switch out. All right, in regards to the electrical connector, that's the position it was in right there. I'm gonna set the switch down. Right here on that far side, you can see that little tab? You just push that tab in and then the plug slides right out. No, no big deal relatively easy to take this out. So we'll get it cleaned up. There's a lot of dust in there and then we'll carefully start taking this apart. But I'm just gonna leave this like that for now. The locker switch is out, it's in my hand. The plug for the lockers and sway bar is right here. And then the side compartment is open for my, for my wiring. All right, you can see right here, one, two, three little tabs. I used that screwdriver right there and just gently started prying this out. And it looks like there's two more on the backside and this thing should separate. Okay, I want you to notice those three metal prongs right there. So when this comes apart, look at this. Okay, those three prongs right there need to go through that little slot right there. So you gotta keep that in mind. So there we go, it's coming along pretty good. Now we're gonna be taking these electronics out right here that are behind the rocker switches. Coming apart nicely. All right, let's take a look at this. The back cover is off. This piece went over like so. Actually, it went like this. That piece went like that. Now we got this electronic board. And it just basically Looks like it just lifts right off of here. Now look at that, it's hanging up a little bit, but it looks like it just lifted right off. Okay, little rubber detents that hold it in place. There's one right there. So that just sat right in there like so. Now there's a little rubber gasket piece. This has got some detents holding it as well. Okay, there, there's the shell right there, okay? Uh, all of that in black, that rectangle that says off-road, needs to be removed. I'll dremel it out, and I'll put some blue painter's tape around this thing to, so I don't scratch it. The rocker switches can stay in for now. They're not a problem. So that needs to be opened up so I can get my switches to fit in there. 
And then this piece on the back needs to be cut as well. This piece was like that, so so basically you gotta you gotta make a cut, I believe, right here. I'll see after the switch assembly's in, so that this backing plate is removed. So that'll be getting cut right there as well to make room for the uh, backs of the new switches. So pretty dusty from Tennessee. This has all got to be cleaned up nice, but uh, so far so good. All right, you can see here for this back plate, I know I need to get rid of basically the Mopar decal. So right here, I got to have a straight cut. To me, the easiest thing to do there is to just gently put it in the vise. I'm going to use a nice hacksaw and cut that straight across. All right, you can see here the back piece cuts off easy enough. Just a nice straight cut. Took a little emery cloth and a file, got rid of some burrs there. So now we got to get down to the serious business of uh, removing with the Dremel this plastic off-road piece to make room for the switch assembly. All right, the Dremel's out. You know you're committed once you start doing that. So I'm just going to put some blue tape around the edges and... Very carefully try to get rid of this rectangle piece of plastic. All right, that looks a little better. Protect those edges. I'm just using a little, um, it's actually a little metal cutting tool with the Dremel. So I'm just gonna very carefully start removing this. All right, you can see here that it's very tedious. There's different little pieces of plastic in there that need to be ground out. It's a freaking messy endeavor for sure. I don't know, maybe I'm about 75, 80% there. So. Making some progress, a little at a time now. A lot of the big cutting is done with. But I've been working on this thing, believe it or not, for about 20, 25 minutes with the Dremel. Okay, I wanted to take a moment because you can see now I'm extremely close, okay? All four corners are started, and let me tell you, it is a tight fit. Now, obviously, I don't want to break it, but you can see it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to uh, try to get this thing nice and clean before I finally put it in. And then if you look at the back of this, you can see that I have my LED lights right there wrapped up in, in the hole. And I also used a little epoxy. So that little strip of LED lights right there is really in there good. And then there's my uh, plus and minus right there coming off the LEDs to be tied in. So we're getting there very, very close. There you go. It was a lot of work for that little LED light to work, but I'm pretty pleased with it. Okay, a look at the back. Now I gotta put that rubber grommet in, the electronics, the cover. So quite a bit of work, but in the final analysis, it came out really good, but a real pain in the ass, no question about it. Uh, pretty damn good fit, but you really gotta spend some time with it and be careful. Okay, in my case, see this piece right here? This piece here extends over to where my connection is for my LED light. So I'm gonna take a razor blade and cut about a half of an inch off of the end of that, and then I should be okay. Okay, this is really worth showing everyone, okay? So as nice and as happy I am with my LED, I had to kind of, you see my connection way in there? I had to kind of bend it over in a 90 degrees, 90 degree angle to get it out of the way. Now, another important thing is see those, see those metal, metal studs right there coming through? That's for the plug, the electrical plug. So that has to go through there like that. Uh, so anyway, there it is. Let's see. Let's set this thing down. Wow, a lot of work. A lot, lot more than I expected. And there we go. So I still have nice connections. I put a little electrical tape on there for an extra insulator. Because don't forget, there's an electronic board over there. There you go. And the locker, the locker switches are installed. They pop right out. I'll be taking them out again, I'm sure, when I wire it. But all I wanted to do was prep the switch today. A lot of work, a lot more work than I expected. But it should be really nice when it's done. 